Hi, this is Travis Ewer with Invictus Gymnastics, and today we are going to discuss the hip driving, kipping ring muscle up for the short straps. Specifically, these are for short straps. Uh, in the Invictus Gymnastics online program, we use a different technique for the long straps. Um, and just so you know what I would consider short straps, if you compare the length of your ring strap to the distance between your foot and your shoulder, I would consider anything that length or shorter to be a short strap. Obviously, if you're a taller person uh, and you're training with a shorter person, the taller person would feel like the ring straps are shorter to them than the short person, okay? Now, we're going to go through the five steps that I have broken down for the ring muscle-up. This specific conversation is going to be starting from the floor, going up to the rings for that first muscle-up. First thing that we're gonna cover is the cast swing. The cast swing is how you get your first little bit of momentum. Then we're gonna cover the back swing, some of the specific things about the back swing that I would like you to pay attention to. The forward swing, which is where you go into the muscle up. The transition, which is actually the muscle up. And then of course the dip to finish off the movement. So here's how I broke down the cast swing. Part one, the cast swing. Casting, just think about fishing, is to throw it out and away from you, okay? So when you start from the ground, we want to get some sort of momentum as immediately as possible. The way that I have our athletes approach this is standing slightly back behind the rings. Obviously, you need to make sure you can reach the rings by jumping, but even though the rings may be easy to reach, I do not recommend starting with your arms up. I do recommend swinging your arms into the jump. That goes for any piece of equipment, whether it's ring or bar. So starting just slightly back behind the rings, arms swing back, and then you're gonna bend and jump. When you jump up, you're gonna watch the rings, but when you grab them, you're going to allow your body to settle into this slightly arched position. The relationship between these two parts is that you stand back behind the rings and then when you jump up, your feet just stay back. You don't need to lift them or hold them or pull them back. No hamstring flexing, anything like that. It's just basically jumping into the rings with kind of a loose body and not having to pull your feet forward as you would when you jump to a bar. Once your body has settled into part B, where you are hanging with that slight arch from the rings, you begin to swing your legs naturally up into this semi-tuck position. You can also do straight legs, but for the matter, we're going to tuck. And then you extend your body outward. This is how you initiate the first swing before the back swing, before the muscle up. From the floor, arm swing, jump. Grab slightly arched. As your body settles, let your legs naturally drop. Bring them up and push them out. This movement is not very dynamic. This should be very fluent. Starting from the ground, jump up. Nothing jerking around in the rings. Letting your weight just settle and slowly move your feet up and out in order to get that initial stretch for the backswing. Now we have part two. This is the backswing. Backswing. Also, probably what I would consider the most important part of preparing for the muscle up. The backswing is kind of like the wind up before the pitch. And if it doesn't have a lot of power or potential power before you go into the forward swing, you're already going with less power than you could ultimately have. So by trying to perfect the backswing out of the cast swing, you can learn how to create as much power as absolutely possible and utilize that to your best extent. The good thing about having a lot of power in the backswing is even if you don't need it, it's still available for you. So concentrating on the backswing is super, super smart. Okay, um, I did put a reference up here from part one. This is part D from, I mean, letter D from part one where the cast swing had finished pretty much going all the way out. 
And now we are going into letter A from D. So now athlete has extended pretty much all the way. And as uh, the athlete begins to drop, the body extends and is now dropping significantly faster as it gets closer to the bottom, swinging down this way. Letter B here is showing that the feet are now going behind. And this is also really important. Um, I like people to think about not just letting their body droop into the swing, but I want them actively trying to drive their legs back as if there is a, uh, say, a beach ball right here that you're trying to knock across the room. So as you come down from that swing, you want to drive your feet up and behind because that, every time you cross the bottom, is the best place that you can produce power, either going forward or backward. So in the case that we're going backward, we want to drive those heels and it's more like a butt squeeze and a lower back arch and not so much bent knees, okay? You will notice that throughout all of these movements, there is no bent knee part. So here we are driving our feet back and because they're going back so fast and we are keeping our legs straight, that momentum gets carried through our legs and as long as we are maintaining a tight body position, our body will begin to rotate floor facing. Now, on a backswing, it is really important that you guys try to keep your hands pronated. If you turn your palms out to the side, what that does is it releases the tension in your lat. So as you go here, it goes straight into the pec, the lat gets soft, but we want that tension, right? Remember, this is the wind up for the pitch. You want tension here in the back before you go. So as long as your hands are pronated, and I guess I should have drawn the rings facing forward. So just imagine you're holding a bar, keeping them about this close. They will widen a little bit, but that's okay. You want to drive your feet up and back and look beneath yourself. This is really similar to doing, say, a lat stretch where you put your hands up on something and you lean into it. You want to create that stretch by pushing your head through. And this is uh, my drawing of a shadow, uh, assuming that there is some sort of a sunlight or a lamp above this person shining down. Uh, this athlete should be trying to look beneath itself and try to see the shadow of its own feet on the floor. I know it sounds crazy, but if you don't do this, which you don't have to, you can keep your head forward, but people have a tendency to overarch, and so their feet come flying way up behind them. And that doesn't create a lot of power, like through momentum, it creates a lot of whip, and whip is not necessarily good. We don't need to go into that. Try to keep your body long, and as your body is rotating backward, what you'll notice here is part A, the rings are forward. So because of the cast swing stretching out, the rings are still forward. The body is starting to swing backward. And as the body swings backward, the rings are still forward. And in this position, part C, the rings are pretty much vertical. Now what does happen here is during the rest of this back swing, the body will kind of float backward beneath the rig. So moving, if the rig is here, the body will continually float this direction. And that is really good because it's going to put you in a great position to initiate that first muscle up. That is the backswing. Okay, now the exciting part, the forward swing, okay? Now, again, we're gonna reference from the last step, uh, step two, during the backswing. I had just mentioned that as the body goes back, it continues to float. And as the body floats backward, the strap continues to move. And so the body is coming back behind the rig. So this is a little bit deeper of an angle of the strap as it was in uh, the finish of the backswing step two. From here, you have to understand that the torso is still moving backward behind the rig. The torso is still moving backward at this point, but then the feet start coming down. Now there's an exchange that happens here. While the feet are back and the body's still drifting, the feet will begin to drop, which actually starts pulling the upper body back more. So because the uh, momentum 
of the legs has subsided. The upper body is now feeling a little bit lighter and it can start moving backward a little bit further. So as the feet drop, this and this will stay the same angle and then you will lengthen out as you drop, actively driving your feet downward toward the floor and the upper body has still got a little bit of momentum, right? So as you pass through this position in part B, part C, you go into a hip hinge, not a hollow, okay? A hip hinge, because that way, now the feet are on their way up and your body starts sinking down and pulling away from the rings. There, it creates a ton of pressure coming down in a straight line from here to here, even more so than here. The weight of your legs going the opposite direction as your upper body is still coming down and back, it's going to create more pulling tension. And that is what kind of gives you a, the ability to spring out of here. Now, this is a position uh, similar to the drill that we use in the Invictus Gymnastics program called the pop swing. The pop swing is a hip hinge to a hip extension. And it's quite violent. The drill is really small, but the idea is that the hips hinging and then extending are actually what create the upward bounce. That's a whole different drill, can't get into it right now. So from this position here, your body is really loaded up and then we put two different movements together. We do a hip extension and we are trying to actively pull backward on the rings. That is called the snap pull, that backward pull and the hip extension is the pop swing or the hip extension is um, the pop of the hips. But put them together and what it does is it creates a lot of upward lift because of the hips, but then pulling back on the rings, and this is important, pulling back on the rings on short straps causes the ring to go up. When the ring is going up, you're going up because you're attached to it. So not only do you have your hips creating that upward drive, but pulling backward on the rings at the same time, and the goal is to do it simultaneously, hence the, uh, coupling to create D, but to do them simultaneously, and that way you get as much height all at once as absolutely possible. Now, let's talk about the reality of the situation here. The reality is your upper back trying to pull backward with your body weight on the rings while you've got all that tension, it's not as strong as your glutes coming through and creating that hip extension, right? So in reality, the hips will extend and then you will see the ring snap back. The reason why the ring snap back is really similar to this. Because there's so much tension in your shoulders that when your hip extends, you will see that shoulder angle bend even though you are trying to pull back. But as soon as the hips finish extending, that kind of releases some of the tension and it goes whack. And so it just springs backward behind your head and that if you could imagine where we're going with this, the hips are back, the shoulders are down, right? But now the hips are going upward and the shoulders are going upward and your chest is now floating forward. It should be because ultimately the ring will end up here, right? This is beneath the ring. We are actually throwing our chest upward and forward into that position. And we're gonna get to it in part four, the transition but as you're floating up, you're th throwing your body where the rings will ultimately end up, and that's why this works so well. So that is the most important part about the forward swing, is the hip hinge to the hip extension and the arms pulling back. Side note, throughout this entire forward swing, you should be looking forward, I'd say about eight meters, 20 feet to 20, 30 feet in front of you. Looking that way, focusing on that, because as soon as you start letting your head go back, you will lose that tension in your upper back that creates that snap pull. Then you end up with a big shoulder angle and your body is more ceiling facing. That is not good. And we'll get to that again in the transition, but the more this way you are, the more this way you're gonna to have to rotate during the transition to get up and over the top of the rings. That is part three, the forward swing.
All right, now we're here on part four. This is the transition, the actual muscle up, right? So what we did in part three is we got that hip extension. We pulled back on the rings. Hopefully we're trying to slingshot our chest upward and forward to where we ultimately want to end up. Uh, and then just to kind of give you an idea, the rings are going to swing back down, going forward to where they were originally hanging uh, vertical. We just want to meet them there. So from this position here, we are going to snap back and we're going to start pulling. And I, I kind of just need to flow through this. A, B, and C is all pretty much the same fluent movement is that it pulls back and then the arms pull and rotate downward. This is where your hands slide over the top of the rings and then you're gonna hinge at the hips and maybe a little bit of an ab crunch in order to get over the top of the rings. Now, this seems strange because I know that there's a lot of hips to rings throughout. Please don't do that. It's not gonna help you. If the rings are at your hips and you try to sit up, you're gonna end up doing a V up. Your feet go too high, there's no rep. You have a hard time uh, getting over the top of the rings. I call it falling into the toilet. <laughs> um, anyway, so part A, this is more like a, a reverse Cuban press. So Cuban press here, rotate and then up, right? So we're going through from that pop swing and snap pull and we're going to go out and rotate, sliding your hands over the top and then hinge and press down to get into uh, the, onto the uh, support part of the muscle up there. The reason why we want to separate them is just considering what happens with the ring straps if you don't. So if my body's flying forward and I've got tension on that ring strap, if I go to pull it around this direction, then it is going to loosen. And when it loosens, my body is no longer pulling itself upward and forward uh, with the help of the rig and the connection of my body to the rig. And so I start losing momentum immediately. Remember, gravity's pulling you. It wants to draw you down to the earth. You gotta keep fighting it wherever you can. And this is what's going to help. So by separating the rings, you are keeping tension on the rings. And mentally, the idea is I'm gonna pull back and I'm going to stretch them out as far as absolutely possible to the side and then get over the top. Because if there is tension, then I know that I have the ability to use the rings and the straps against the rig to pull. So we're gonna go from there. Uh, I hope you love my drawings. Um, separating the rings. The rings start rotating down, knuckles start pointing downward. Keep in mind we're being pronated this whole time. So there's not like this weird like karate uh, ring row thing. We're just keeping our hands pronated. Start pressing down, hinge over the top. And then this is where we get into our final catch position before the dip. And um, my recommendation, a lot of people now, for your first muscle up, you may just catch at the bottom part of the dip. But as you get used to this process of this first muscle up, we call it the mounting ring muscle up, right? The first one. You can get more and more power into this thing that you rotate through and you don't even have to get to the bottom of the catch position before you dip up because your body is moving upwards so fast. As long as you get your hands on top of the rings, you can start driving downward right away. So um, this could be a... Best case scenario, right? Uh, being so high over the top of the rings, but we do want to keep pressing down. And what I want you to notice here is that the elbows flick up against the ring strap. This will prevent you from doing that crazy like fly through the middle of the rings. That doesn't look good. Um, so you throw your elbows out, kind of hits the brakes up against the uh, ring strap and you can lean up against that. Having the feet forward is going to be a benefit as well. So if you can imagine the feet being backward, then you've got all this body weight behind the rings and to counterbalance that, you're going to have to lean further forward. So that means that the transition, if your feet drop, right? If your feet drop, the transition is going to have to land more floor facing. But providing you can just go from that hip extension here, and then as you rotate through this reverse Cuban press, the transition, hinging in the hips again, Keeping the feet forward means that I can press down on the rings, get pressure, and then push and have my uh, torso more vertical, closer to vertical, uh, than I would if I let my legs drop. Uh, 
This is the same thing on a bar muscle-up, if you guys uh, are familiar with the bar muscle-up movement. If your feet are on the front side of the bar, you can actually finish the transition on top, more vertical in the torso, whereas if your feet drop, you're gonna have to lean forward more. So this is part four of the transition, which is essentially a reverse Cuban press, utilizing the momentum from uh, an upward trajectory from part D in the pop swing, snap pull, uh, forward swing part. All right, now that we're on top of the rings, it's time for the dip. We don't really need to discuss the actual pressing down against the rings, do we? Well, I didn't think so either. So I'm just going to go over worst case scenario. You get to the bottom of that catch position and you can't get out. You need to keep that dip. First thing is be patient, don't freak out. Make sure that you're not gonna fall through. If you start wiggling around once you get into that catch position, there's a good chance that one arm's gonna do something kind of crazy. Um, you catch in that low position, I want you to get comfortable. Move your hands around if, if you need to, just to feel like you're secure. But from there, from this worst case scenario tuck position, you're going to allow your legs to uh, slowly move downward and backward, okay? Almost like you're trying to kick yourself in the butt or check to see if you stepped in gum on your shoe. So you're going to bring your legs down and back, and from there, you drive them back down smoothly and slowly through a stretch position. Keeping in mind that as your legs cross the bottom, that they should, your body should be feeling very heavy on the ring right here. And then as your foot crosses the bottom, you're gonna pull your knees up toward your face and stop toward the floor. So following this arrow's direction, once the knees come up toward your face, you want to jerk them in the opposite direction. And then as they are pushing down, drive as hard as you can. You may not get all the way up on that first kip, but get to a point where you can stop and hold yourself and then give yourself a little bit of a swing again and just keep pumping yourself up. I call that the dentist chair, just like when you're at the dentist and they're trying to pump you up. And eventually you guys will get to the top of your dip. That is the hip driving, kipping ring muscle up for short straps broken down for you. If you guys are interested in learning more about this stuff, I like to break movements apart, try to make sense of them, and I do that in the Invictus Gymnastics program. If you would like to join, it says Invictus Gymnastics up here, please go to crossfitinvictus.com. Athlete programs or online programs, you get three sessions and three levels per week, three core sessions per week. You get access to the members only Facebook coaching group where you can post video and I personally coach you. And it's only 39 US dollars per month if you were to pay one month at a time. There's discounts if you uh, set yourself up for three or six months. So best of luck to you, your ring muscle ups and everything that you've got going in your CrossFit world. I am Travis Ewart, thank you for watching.